Okay, uh, welcome everybody. Uh, thanks for attending this talk. Uh, my name is Carlos Panato. I work at Chainguard and I also am tech lead on the SIG release and Kubernetes. And uh, I maintain other projects in the cloud community as well. Hey, uh, welcome everyone. My name is Ricardo. I work for VMware. I am uh, one of the Ingress Nginx maintainers as well. And you can find me around in SIG CLI sometimes. And uh, yeah, you can find me around. Okay. Messing with code, breaking breaking things. We today's talk we're gonna like try to understand like the feature lifecycle in Kubernetes and how we like people can open features and like do implementing to the whole lifecycle. Uh, before we start, like uh, uh, we have three questions. The first one is who here uh, is here for the first time that doesn't know anything about the caps and the uh, feature lifecycle? Can just for curiosity. Okay. okay. Cool. And uh, who are here that uh, have features, ideas that want to know how to push those to the through the life cycle? Okay. Okay. And the final one: uh, who here open already like one or more features, ideas, and uh, it's stuck in between? It's like <laughs> okay. Are here because think that we are jerks? Yeah. <laughs> okay. Thank you, everybody. The, we're gonna go, like go over some examples, and then we're gonna like explain the the how the uh, cap works in the real life. For example, this is the one feature idea that is like a kind of let's say easier way to roll out config maps. The feature idea is like already open till like uh, uh, 2016, and uh, like there is no conclusions or things yet. Like this feature is still open and it's not yet implemented. Like for example, we have like a, more than a thousand people like saying this is, an, is a good thing to have, but uh, there is no concrete like uh, outcome from this idea here. Another one is like a, a simple startup in ordering, like uh, still open like from like eight, the 2018. There is a lot of uh, questions and a lot of uh, like uh, comments and people like, uh, should we use a readiness gate, like some other new filtering field, like to give ideas? There's a lot of discussions, a lot of closed issues around these ideas here. Another one that we like, it's a dual stack for IPv6, was open 2018, and it was closed like last year. That took like, a, just in quotes, years. yeah, just three years to get like the full thing the full story, like uh, roll out and uh, everybody agree on those things. Sometimes takes less time, sometimes takes more time, sometimes like never end, right? For example, uh, Ricardo opened one idea like for the printing HTTP life, uh, liveness check. And this idea didn't like went through, uh, through and they just closed the, the idea. They closed my issue in my face. Yeah. Damn maintainers. Okay, uh, there's a lot of more examples. You can go to the enhancements uh, uh, repo and then in uh, others, and then you can take a look. But why like some features are like just refused or not moving forward? For example, does uh, the first question if you want to uh, open a, a feature idea is like does it like solves a wide problem or a very specific, like very central? and a very specific use case for maybe for your company or maybe for your use case. The other one is like it's bring or solve a security concern that's like gonna fix any security issues or maybe close the door for possible issues in the future. This is fix or solve a performance concern, like there is any performance issues in the, in the cluster, in the Kubernetes itself, that this feature is gonna like fix or help to improve a little bit. And uh, this, is, uh, this feature is gonna be a breaking change like for something like in the future. Like remember that there's no breaking change allowed in the GA when you move forward to GA. And this was discussed before, like uh, what's the conclusions? What's the, the other discussions? Like people are talking about those things or not? Or it's just a brand new idea? Okay, then let's meet the cap. Like, uh, if not, uh, people know, this is Stephen Augustus. He was the one of the persons behind the implementation of the cap itself. 
And then we like, we like to make jokes and memes with Steven as well. OK, uh, what's uh, CAP means? CAP means like a Kubernetes enhancement proposal. It's a way to propose and communicate and coordinate the new efforts in, in Kubernetes project itself. It's, it's these uh, CAPs are still in, uh, in beta, but uh, it's a mandatory for our enhancements starting the release 114. Uh, you can scan the scare code that go to the, the page in the GitHub repo that uh, have all the explanation for what is a cap, what's the mandatory fields. We're going to cover this, uh, try to cover a little bit in this uh, 30, 30 minutes. minutes. Ricardo? Okay. That's it, me? Yeah. Okay. Thank you. So, uh, first of all, we do discussions everywhere. So, we have what we call in Kubernetes. Uh, a SIG, which is a special interest group. And when you want to add something in, in Kubernetes, you need to go to some SIG meeting and say, hey, I want to add some new feature. Then uh, the SIG may say, yeah, we agree. Or you can get stuck like for six months bringing this discussion to every meeting and say, hey, we want to implement this new admin network policy. And yeah. Hey, Andrew, and, <laughs> and get like stuck in the discussions. So there are some things that you need to understand when you, when you want to bring that to the community. Like, is this thing an enhancement? Does this need like a blog post? Uh, does it require more SIGs? Is this just something for network or like network security and maybe the API or whatever? Uh, does it redesign something, needs a big effort, impact, impact user experience, and, and so on? And mostly like people can complain or notes about it. Right? So if someone can complain or notes about it, probably it's a cap that's not like a bug fix or something like that. Then we discuss, and we discuss a lot. So uh, this is an example that I brought here because uh, that's something that I was close to some time, which is uh, the cluster scope admin network policy that wasn't called an admin network policy. It's when you want, uh, who, who actually every, time wondered like why don't we have like a network policy that the admin manages instead of like each namespace here I'm not sure okay we have one two okay so uh, it's the idea is actually me as an admin I want to create some firewall rules each that can allow my pods to go to each DNS and so on so uh, it took just like 670 comments to get this thing merged it was pretty fast right so it took like one year and a half just people discussing how this could uh, be created or not. Then you go to the alpha implementation, then you discuss again, and you go to the beta implementation. And before reaching GA, uh, a feature can always be rejected. So uh, it happened uh, that you say, yeah, we want to implement this, and then, mm, you know what, we don't want this anymore. We think that's going to have some impact. So it's kind of frustrating, but yeah, it happens. And then we discuss a lot more. Right. So the conclusion is actually, yeah, it takes some time because we discuss a lot. Thank you, folks. No, I mean, it's, a, it's kind of part of the process. Yeah. Uh, just a one uh, quick comment. Like when uh, uh, the discussions happen, like uh, as you can see in this diagram here, like before the alpha implementation, there's a lot of discussions. And then when the feature, like the people agree, like let's move forward, let's implement this this feature, it goes to the alpha implementation. And then it's gonna, like, after that get merged, it's gonna, like, roll out to the, the release, and then it's gonna be, like, a, a little bit, like, a running in the cluster, like, getting released uh, for a few releases. Right. And then the discussion, like, people start discussing about, like, how to move this to alpha to beta. And then there's a lot of other discussions involved with it. This is gonna make, uh, require any change in the API, we're gonna require any like breaking change. In this alpha to beta, it's allowed to have breaking change. That's not a, a big problem. When you move from beta to GA, then it's like another conversation. Then there's a lot of other process around that to start to like say, okay, we need to stabilize. In beta, we're gonna stabilize the API and all the stuff. Most likely in beta, you're not gonna have uh, like any breaking change, only if you move from beta one to beta two. But most of the time, like uh, people try to avoid having like API changes. And then when you like, there's a lot of other discussions involved in that, and then you move to GA. And then you like finally, uh, it's like uh, 
in GA. And then it takes a few releases to get in all this process. You do like five lines of code in three months discussing something, at least. Yeah. Three months I'm gonna be, I'm being really nice. <laughs> Seems like day job. So uh, how can we get this feature in Kubernetes? It's like, usually uh, this is something that we see a lot. Like some folks, they just say, hey, I need this thing, they open an issue and like, yeah, keep poking the developers every month. Like, hey, is this ready? Hey, my boss is asking me, is this ready? And then you have some folks that they just say, mm, maybe we can fork the project. And if you fork the project, you are gonna have some problems because maintaining Kubernetes is not that easy, like I think. <laughs> the code, it's just like a huge code base. And uh, actually the idea is discussion with the community. It's the way to, to get that. Uh, I decided to bring some real life examples to you so you can see uh, actually how this goes and, uh, and uh, uh, what can go wrong actually. Because me and Carlos just saying, yeah, so you just take time because you discuss a lot. Like you folks, you people at Kubernetes, you like to talk. That's not that case. So uh, we have the first case, which is you figure out a way of implementing some feature and then you'll say, okay, whatever, I'm gonna implement this this way. This may see the right way of doing that. And then you figure out during the discussions that it may work, right? But uh, probably it's not gonna work on the right way. So uh, I, I started implementing, my first cap in Kubernetes was this, what we call network policy port range, which was just a new field. Like everybody was like, hey, can you just add this new field in the API? Like you've ha you have the starting port and like you may have a new field calling start to end, right? And uh, yeah, I mean, it's a really common case. So the first idea was uh, in the network policy specification, just having a new field called port range and you can do from and to and the exceptions. Pretty cool, right? So that's easy. The thing is that while discussing and saying, yeah, we can go through there, uh, SIG network was like, mm, so if my network plugin doesn't know about that, you are just gonna open all of the firewall rules for everyone. So is this gonna work? Yeah, sure, it's the pigeon, it's working, right? My network policy, it's covering all of the range of the ports. So it's working the way that I do. So, uh, we, we, based on that discussion, we reached the conclusion that maybe we should start simple and just adding a new field, which is like the end part. So at least if something fails for the network plugin, it will interpret this way without uh, like the field here, right? So you don't have in, in, in the network plugin, it wouldn't implement, it, it wouldn't interpret uh, this network port as like anything. So was the right solution? Maybe, but I was gonna have some problems. The second one, second case, is when you has this great idea in 2019, I was like on the left side when I started implementing stuff like, yeah, pretty, I'm still pretty, but a bit more fat right now. And, uh, and then in 2022, you are still discussing uh, admin network policies or uh, any other new feature. So, some features, they take time, right? So one of the examples was like adding colors to kubectl and I want you all to speak with me, that's kubectl. Tim Hawking is not here, right? So that's a kubectl, thank you. So <laughs> there is an issue since 2018 about that. And the problem was, can we add colors to kubectl output? Like describe, get, pods. Sometimes you do like kubectl get, pods, and you wanna see in red if something is in crash loopback and in green, something is running, right? Cool. So, you have some workarounds for that already. But I don't wanna install and have a, a lot of workarounds like our cute color plugin. I want to have this inside. And then you start having discussions with the community like, can the colors impact the scripts that rely on kubectl output? So imagine you are like using kubectl in GitHub Actions and like the red color actually can be interpreted as delete everything in your cluster, right? Can happen. Can someone write themes for outputs? Like I like Dracula, uh, probably someone likes other team, like Dark Knight, something like that, Sand. 
What about autonic people? I think it's colorblind, actually, the, the, the right. Yeah, but like people that cannot uh, make differences between red and green. So you need to think on the accessibility of that, right? And finally, and which th this one is the most difficult in Kubernetes today, it's like, is the maintainer willing to long-term maintain the solution? Because sometimes someone just jump into the repo and say, hey, this is the new feature, I can go through there, and then like, okay, the feature is fine, but when you have some bugs on that, who's gonna maintain that, right? So it's, it's kind of a discussion that does it, is it worth to have this? So there is an example on that. We have a work in progress. Eddie, is, as an example, is taking care of that for a new QBRC file and uh, was like, hey, is this the best solution for that problem? No, but it actually generated a new discussion on how can we make kubectl configurable for the users, right? So, cool. Okay, the third case is when actually, when something gets shipped. So it's like after four years discussing and you say, mm, you start implementing after all, all of those discussions, say, I don't think it's gonna work, but it works. Uh, who uses distroless in the cluster? Who knows? Who, kno who knows? Who doesn't know what is distroless? Actually, I can do some. Okay, cool. So distroless is, is like a Docker image that doesn't have anything other than your program, whatever you want to run, right? So it was made for that. You don't have curl, you don't have the wget, you don't have bash, you don't have anything there. So it's kind of hard to debug. You can do kubectl exec, get into that, and uh, it's gonna say, hey, I don't have shell scripts here. I don't have a shell, I don't have a shell interpreter, nothing. So uh, since 2019, there was a discussion on how can we rely on those really secure images without anything. And still, I need to debug, debug that, those stuff, right? I need to see if the network is working. So this is a really hard feature. Because besides saying like, yeah, it's just like, can we create a new kubectl debug program? You have a lot of machinery under, under the hood. Like you need to uh, implement a way that uh, the kubelet knows that it needs to attach a new container into that pod and create a new network and so on other things. So it got merged, but it got merged like, uh, where is it? I can see it, but yeah, it started on 116, like 2017 and it got stable in 125. So that's, that's just nine releases. Each release, is, it's like three months or four. Yeah, yeah you, make, you make the calculation. I'm bad at that, so that's a four years maybe. Okay. The last one, and I like this one because it's a, uh, uh, who does Red Hat installation things here? Who have, Red Hat, I mean uh, Red Hat uh, based distributions. Who has ever installed some Red Hat based distribution, Linux? Who does this as the first step? Me too, yeah. So Red Hat Linux distributions based, uh, that's not, I'm not talking about Red Hat, but I mean uh, th this based feature, uh, it has something called SE Linux that was developed by NSA, and it's really, really, really hard to maintain. And it's enabled by default in Red Hat distribution. So the idea is that you have some security on that, right? And the first thing that people goes and do is like, hey, I'm just gonna disable this thing because I don't wanna manage security in my Red Hat installation, whatever. And in Kubernetes, we did something similar, which was pod security policies, which is not enabled by default, but some admins, they enable by default, and when they do that, the easier thing to do is actually disable that in your own space. So I do that. A lot of people I know that do that, you just don't need to tell, well, Right, like I, I can see my manager here. Oh, he's there, okay, sorry. I don't do that in our production clusters. <laughs> uh, so Kubernetes is not secure by default. And I want you to repeat this to yourself. Like Kubernetes, it's not secure by default, right? So the problem was we need to, to establish policies that block my pods to run with insecure configurations. Uh, I don't want to, any pod running with host network, running as root and other things, right? But PSP, it's, it's really hard to configure in a workload. It depends on a bunch of knowledge. Uh, it depends on the 
user, and you as a user probably, you don't want to know uh, all of the per permissions that you need. You just want to know that you can run in a secure way or not, right? So that's a, at least that's what I expect. If I try to do something that I'm not supposed to, okay, I'm not supposed to run this as root, so I'm just going to drop this configuration. And still, you as a user, you can change the permissions with pod security policies. So you can get for yourself a better permission, right? So mm, I don't think it's a good idea from the security perspective that I can change my own per permissions. So it ends up being easier just to bypass, like I say, Linux. And uh, pod security policy, uh, even having a lot of discussions, it was deprecated uh, I guess in 120, 121? Yeah, and remove it on 125, right? So it never reached GA, which is really important to know because we cannot deprecate anything that reaches GA unless you have another GA that's compatible to the previous before. But it was beta. And even in beta, the community decided that, yeah, this is too hard. Let's replace you with something else, right? So even after all of the discussions and all of those cycles, in beta, we say, yeah, okay, let's block this. Uh, so there is a new feature called pod security admission. It's configured on a namespace basis. Uh, it applies to all of the workloads. And uh, the community decided to make it simpler, right? So you cannot configure a lot of stuff on that, but at least you may have some baselines on security. So it was like, mm, yeah, after all of those discussions, we think that we can just go through this, not, not, not leaving the user a lot of choices, but at least giving them something better than we had before and allowing them to be a bit more secure. Okay, you wanna? You can finish. We can do it together, <laughs> we can think it. Yeah, how much time we have? I don't know. Okay, that was pretty fast, sorry. So uh, some conclusions that we have. First of all, features, they are hard, right? So, uh, and I've been, in your spot for a while in Kubernetes as well, thinking like, hey, this is easy. Like, I don't know how to code, but maybe it's just like three lines of code. Like, stop being a jerk. Come on, folks. Like, they are hard. We need to discuss a lot. And uh, Kubernetes code base, it's huge, right? So that's uh, something really big. And we cannot test everything in Kubernetes today. Uh, a new feature needs like to, you need to test all of the scenarios. If something new breaks, something old, and based on the combinations, you may end up with each test running like for maybe one week. So it's hard to test all of the things. Uh, if something breaks, people are gonna, bat mad at, are gonna be mad at us, right? So, hey, why did you implement this code that broke my workload? It was working fine, so I cannot migrate anymore, right? So we need to be extra careful when changing something. And unless, sometimes we just don't have people willing to implement and follow the whole process. And yeah, it's tiring. It pays its price, but it is time. So uh, I am like, I, I, I can see a, a bit, some of uh, Kubernetes maintainers or uh, members here, and I can speak for myself, but I know that the other ones, they know as well. Like uh, sometimes it's just tiring. Like you start implementing and you need to discuss a lot and you have your day job. And not, not all, all of us are paid to work on the upstream. So yeah, like people need to understand that. And if you are willing to have some new feature, please join us. Like we need people to help us on, on the discussions. And it's fun actually, the discussions are great. We make a lot of jokes during the meetings. Some takeaways, don't give up, right? So uh, Kubernetes needs ideas. Uh, uh, we are here actually to tell people why it takes time, but still we cannot know everything that everybody needs. And if we are missing something that's uh, that's a, a really required feature. The execution sometimes it's hard, but it pays its price. Uh, take a look into past enhancements. We, we left some QR codes, uh, and we are gonna upload the newer version of this presentation to SCAD. The, the other one, it's a bit like, it's already deprecated. It didn't reach a GA. GA is now. Yeah. Maybe this is GA. I'm gonna see by like the questions after, yeah. Uh, explore the features, track new, one, tra track new ones that are in alpha. We need feedbacks, even if they are alpha and you wanna jump in, uh, like say, hey, I saw this as an alpha, I have this test cluster, I can implement on this test cluster. I don't need to keep an SLA, so I can just add this in my cluster and my users, they are not gonna complain. You can do that like, as well, in production clusters. 
just don't tell your boss. Uh, don't be shy, bring in new ideas. Uh, there is no right or wrong, so maybe you have this new idea and you say, yeah, this is stupid, I'm not bringing, bring this. You can call me on Slack, you can call Carlos on Slack, you can call a lot of us on Slack if, if, you, if you don't want to speak public, publicly, but please bring the ideas. Uh, if you think it's worth to implement it, raise the issue, bring to the SIGs as well, and uh, understand the reasoning. Uh, if someone says, no, we are not going to implement that as well, that's not because we are jerks, that's because probably we had some discussion on past and saw that maybe this is going to bring us more problem than, than solution in Kubernetes code. But we are all nice people, 99% of us. Not Carlos. <laughs> Uh, and not only of code Kubernetes is made, so uh, uh, you can propose improvements in docs, feedbacks, uh, feedback in your own experience. Uh, as, your, as a contributor as well, if you start contributing and you think it's too much hard to contribute, we need feedbacks for all of those things. So just feel free to reach us on Slack. You are around that. We take some, uh, we take some, sometimes, sometimes to answer, but at least we try to answer everybody, okay? And, uh, I, I want to speak something yeah, else. I yeah. have just a one. I remember just one another example that that doesn't touch the Kubernetes code base itself, but we are planning to move uh, part of the inclusive naming uh, work group. We are proposing to change the Kubernetes Kubernetes KK, the the GitHub repository for the master branch to the main branch, like becoming not not calling master but main. We are discussing this to, just to have an idea that doesn't touch code base. We are discussing this size uh, uh, last year, and we are, didn't implement yet because that are going to affect uh, not only the entire Kubernetes uh, organization, but going to affect downstream users yep. that people consume Kubernetes and build Kubernetes on their own. Like we uh, we sent a survey last year. I, we got like a few persons from different organizations uh, replying. We decide to not uh, move forward in that time because the, we just got like 10 answers. And I think we, we have much more organizations that rely on the building uh, uh, on the Kubernetes on their, their own infrastructure. And then we are like, a, just to say this is like a simple renaming, but it's not that simple. And inside the Kubernetes organization, we like need to scan the entire uh, repositories, jobs, pro, everything, to know who is relying on the master branch and the name of the, like, to change. We did a lot of work. This is, like, a, just a, a, a normal rename, but uh, in our Kubernetes organization, that is a huge stuff. It's not that easy. In GitHub, is it's just a button, Yeah. right? <laughs> that's not that way. OK, folks, uh, I think you. that's all for now. Thank you, everyone. And we, we have, have time a, for, we have a few questions. for questions. Yeah. yeah. If you have. Ah, yeah. Karen with, is with the microphone if someone wants to make some question. Andrew cannot make questions. <laughs> Thanks. Um, I was just wondering what your thoughts would be about having a either a product manager or product management sort of principles I included in this um, type of process and whether you think that would work, wouldn't work, or, or how that might be best utilized. Let me see if I understood. The question is like uh, including project managers and... Not, not a project, product. Yeah. Yeah. So we, I'm a product manager. Yeah, we, we have some <laughs> persons involved that is a program and a, a product manager in the community. Yeah. Like, for example, uh, in the SIG release, we have Lauri, and she, she's working like to create a vision and create a roadmap, and we define all this stuff for, at least for the SIG release itself, but to, that impacts the other SIGs as well. Then, uh, like, I would like to see more uh, product managers and stuff like running and helping the, the, the other SIGs. I think that ni is a nice thing to have. But uh, again, like uh, we need those people like to jump in and uh, show up and participate. Yeah, so the best way is just to jump into a SIG and just yep. see what you can do from there. Correct. Sounds good. Thank you. Great talk, guys. That was really awesome. Um, I have a question on 
you had a slide that said the, the, the flow chart with discuss, 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 right, in a constant feedback loop. Do you think there's a way to, or do you think there's a better way to update that process to make it more exciting for contributors who want to get involved in, like, we're contributors, right? We want to write code. We don't want to sit and write docs. Do you foresee some optimizations to that process, to the cut process that could help? You want to answer? Okay. Uh, so I am someone that actually don't, that's not that I don't like the cap process, but I got burdened by that as well as you, Andrew. Yeah. I'm right. So we've been uh, dealing with a lot of caps, and uh, sometimes you just get tired. I think that one thing that actually uh, could make uh, caps more uh, exciting is actually removing a bit of like the discussions being something that uh, that formal and maybe having more opportunities between the contributors to gather together and do whatever they think they, they want and then show the result, right? So, uh, but, but that's not about the process, it's more about like how people they need to deal with that, right? So, hey, I don't want to keep writing these documentations and discussing my whole life like for one, one year and a half. Maybe I just wanna make my, prove my point. So I think it's more up about like the contributors to showing how this would work, like they're changing their own mindset and just going ahead and proposing to, to, like, to the tech leads, like, hey, we did this. And we've seen a lot of this happening in SIG Network recently, right? So people just saying, hey, we did this. If you don't want to, do, if you don't want to use that, we are going to make our own product. Like, a ping is one of the things. Maybe it, it's a way to go on that, right? So. Yeah, totally agree. Thank you. Is, is the cap program, if there is a program, measuring the actual like tech time versus cycle time versus like interactions? Because like at some point, let's say it, it doesn't look like it's going to take less time to get features in. It's going to take more time. So in the manufacturing industry, this was figured out. So like they decide like what is the, the lead time, tech time. And so like when you do process analysis, like this has been figured out to understand where actually the time is being spent. Is it just waiting? Is he waiting for someone to comment? Is he waiting for someone to write code? Is it during writing code? Is he waiting for someone to approve, right? So those, I think folks will need to get a little bit more deterministic into identify like where is the actual wait time in each of those processes? Because it might be three years, but it might be three months of work and everything else is waiting, right? right. So do you see anything being done in that sense? Do we have if, metrics? The answer is no, it's fine. So. Yeah, like we need to think that, that that a lot of people that is like a tech lead and uh, like involved in the community, they are doing the free time, right? And uh, sometimes that free time, I only have my free time to review a cap or take a look or make a comment going to be in like in two or three weeks. And uh, like on Sundays. Yeah, on a, my Sunday, and I'm like, I'm not want to do that in my Sunday, I'm going to do the next one. Like, I think we should track more and uh, have more better mm -hmm. metrics on those things, and then maybe starting like, a, as we like maybe have like some product manager that can track and push things, but uh, I think we need to still remember that's like most, most of the time is people are doing like uh, in the free type, not in the company base. There's a lot of people that that's not company based back at uh, workloads. Okay. Anyone else? Okay. Thank you folks. Thanks so much. <laughs>